each asana. A, B, C, and D. Everyone's favorite pose. You have to realize that at this point, we're getting to the middle of the sequence and it's crescendoing into some of the more difficult poses of the primary series. To start with reach asana A, the right knee will come up and the heel should be to the outside of the hip. As you extend the hand forward, we want the ribs to slide to the inside of the thigh. The more you come forward, the more the weight is sitting on this foot. Right? We want to keep this hand extended and strong so that when we turn, it acts like a corkscrew. So you see as we turn, eventually the turn will happen up in the shoulder. If this is too soft, then we're ending up with everything collapsing. So here's a bend, here's a bend, here's a bend. So we extend forward, the thumb comes all the way around and back. Then you reach back, catching the hand. Right? It's a constant lift and we let the head hang. That's reach us an A. In terms of adjusting for teachers, come up. Okay. You never want to pull here and push here. So you're either holding this in and guiding them around, or you're holding them and making them lift forward. The student should be lifting forward and then coming around. There shouldn't be both at the same time. You end up fighting yourself. And sometimes this knee wants to drop out. So if that, you notice, is the more common thing for that student, then you hold it in and you just let them work this. Right? Another common misconception when people are adjusting is they're trying to keep people's hips on the floor. As this knee bends, the hip will rotate and this may come off the ground. Now there are some people who can keep this down and come forward, but that's actually quite rare. It's more common that every time you bend this knee, the hip will come up. When you're standing and doing this adjustment, if you're keeping the extension here, you're just walking around. See, I'm just walking and then sit up, sit up, and catch. Right? It's very important that when you're doing the assisting, that one of you is leading. It will either be the teacher or the student. So if I feel that she's resisting, then I have to wait. I don't continue just to get her into the pose. The two main things we want to see is the, lib, the ribs lifting up and forward. See how she sits up? And then the spin coming from the thumb. See here? Those are the two main parts. For Marichyasana A. When we do Marichyasana B, the position is exactly the same. The only difference is now we're going to put this foot into the lotus. So left foot into lotus. and then bend this knee. For some people, this may be it. That's the end of the pose. Again, depending on what their half lotus is like, this may be all they do. If this is the case where you're working just on the lotus, take two hands and sit up. Just sit up. Then they just sit like that. Until such time where the lotus feels relaxed and they feel like they can slowly move themselves more forward. Otherwise, the exact same action is taking place. Hand back, then head down. Inhale. Exhale. Good. That is Marichasana B. The C version, the knee comes up again, right knee. The hand goes back, right hand comes back, and the left hand will come all the way around the leg and catch. Okay? 
and then we're looking back. So this is Marichasana C. Come back. Now, again, for adjusting purposes, there's two ways you can do this adjustment. The first way is that the student already has a good twist. They're already pretty capable. In which case, you would sit in front of them, and the idea is this rib would come to this leg. So see how we're bringing the rib across. What we're looking for is a free elbow. If the elbow is stuck here, that should be it. Then the hand would be there, and then that would be the pose. There is nothing more to do. If the elbow comes free, again, we're using the thumb as the marker, see? Arm is extended, body is straight, in and back. That is one adjustment. Michael? The other adjustment, which is not as common, is if someone really doesn't have a good twist. In which case, they would hold here and you would help just get them to sit up and lift. So you actually would begin to act like a wall so that they can't fall back. And they would just breathe and lift and breathe and lift until such time where their hand and their, again, their elbow was free. then you can lift them up. That's Marichasana C. The D version is exactly the same. And this is by far the most difficult pose. Left leg up. The same thing happens as in C. This rib comes to this leg, right? And we're looking for the elbow to be free. Now a lot of times the student will want to look back. As much as possible have them keep an eye on their elbow because if they're leaning back then we're doing a contradiction. We're trying to lean back and twist forward at the same time. So it becomes too much pressure. And usually it will be too much pressure on the knee or the ankle. This is very common for people to hurt their knees and hurt their ankles. Even break bones in some cases. What we want to do is be very careful that the rib comes across here. See? And then she sits in here. Sits up nice and straight. We take the back hand and we catch. Now she can look back. Ideally we want the chest facing sideways. Right? We don't really care about what the shoulders are doing. Chest and then eyes look to the back of the room. Again you can see that the hip is slightly off the ground. It doesn't matter that it's sitting down or it doesn't matter that it's up. What matters is that she is lifting up and the breath is steady and the pose become steady. Right. You cannot emphasize enough that this is by far the most difficult posture and the easiest one to pull too hard or to adjust too much. Right. You should always look at the student, look at the capability, look at the level before you just start making adjustments. Those are the Marichasanas, A, B, C, and D. Navasana. Now, when we do Navasana, what we want to do, grab your legs. Right? We want to keep some space between the thighs and the ribs. So the back's going to feel like it's slightly rounded, but actually, this is the straight. What a lot of people like to do is this. They like to stick their chest out. Now the weight of their head, shoulders, and chest is resting in their back. 
So we want to keep the tummy down as if we took a big rock and placed it in our hips. Right? So elbows are up, sit this back. Right? So that's the shape we're looking for. The next thing you want to do is lift your heels off the ground, point your toes. So that again, you see her knees coming up and we're holding this round shape in here. Now as much as possible, she just lifts the shin without changing this. For some people this might be it. Again, this might be the starting point or this might be the starting point. Right? Once this position feels comfortable and you're here, now you release the arms. Again, the arms are not passive, they're extending forward. So like she's trying to touch my hand. See? So all this expands, it's not leaning back. And then without changing this, as if we have a pin in the knees, only the legs go straight as much as possible. Then bend and come down. So we're trying not to change this shape. Now, if making the legs straight means she needs to open this a bit, see, don't lean, see, then the opening is still here. This is still down. Her lower back should be moving towards the floor, not her upper back. So if it needs to be wider, that's fine. It's best to keep the knees bent until this position feels stable. Then it may just be a flexibility issue, bend your knees. And she's challenging the flexibility part of it. But the stability is all inside here. In between each Navasana, there is a lift up. There are no handstands. So you'll see videos or see things where people are going to handstands. Those are not necessary. All we need to do is lift up and go down. As you feel better with lifting your hips up, then you lift your legs up and lift everything up. Lift up and back down. And you do it between each Navasana. Each Navasana is done for five breaths and we do five rounds of that. Right? Remember, keeping the stability in here, an imaginary ball is sitting there. The lower back is a bit softer. It's not so up and down straight. Right? That is Navasana.